So here's a little demonstration on how the code runs. We're going to go ahead and press 1 to enable the drive. Following that, we're just going to go down the list, so we're going to press 2 to enter speed control. First thing to do here is to set the direction. Uh, from there, we're going to go ahead and set the motor to spin clockwise. <clears throat> and now we have to set our speed. Uh, let's go with 700 RPM to start. Um, and finally, once you have all these parameters set, you can go ahead and press the 3 key and the motor will spin with rapid updates of position and speed. You can see just how accurate they are. When I press space, the motor will change directions. Um, and yeah, <clears throat> so the we're just going to show you how the, uh, the counterclockwise also works, just you know to cover any any holes. Same process, except you press two on the first direction input. Then you're going to go ahead and set the speed. We're going to try a different speed this time at 300 RPM. Um, and yes, as you can see, it's going at negative 300 RPM, indicating counterclockwise, and you can see the position being rapidly updated. And same as before, the spacebar changes the direction. So we're gonna go ahead and press X and go back to the main menu. We're gonna try position control out, so that was two on the keyboard. Um, we're gonna try an absolute move. You'll see the current motor position uh, at that grossly large number of pulses. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put something relatively close. Um, oh, sorry, little misinput there. So I'm just going to have to go back and, and retry that. So same process. Go ahead and press one. There's the current motor position. Uh, we're going to do let's do let's do negative eighty thousand. Shouldn't take too long to get there. So when I press space, that's when the move will initiate. We're going to move it around hundred RPM. To get to that negative 80,000 pulses um, and you'll see in just a minute here that it will stop right at negative 80,000 yeah. okay we're gonna try the relative move now uh, this will only take whole numbers for rotations this could be modified if, if you desire to do that we're gonna just try three revolutions um, and just to prove to you that that was three rev revolutions, uh, we're going to go ahead and make it do negative three revolutions so that we get back to that original negative 80,000 pulses. And as you can see, we are back at negative 80,000. So we'll go ahead and get back to the main menu. <clears throat> and now that we are far away, we're going to go ahead and home the motor. You'll see it, uh, it'll start moving slowly. It's gonna find home. When it does find home, it'll give you the current position at zero and indicate that homing is complete. Um, and now I'm going to physically stall the motor with my hand so that the drive is faulted. And that way we can go ahead and show that the drive reset functionality um, works just fine. And as you can see, the motor, just to prove that it's okay, we're gonna go into to speed control and send it spinning. We're going to go high speed this time, 2000 RPM. Seems like a good number. And you'll see that the drive reset, yes, did work. The motor is responsive once again. So inside the STM32 board is this program. Um, apologies for not being overly organized. But yes, this will be available for your download uh, for reference or for use. Basically what this is, is a simple menu driven kind of motor control for very, very basic control of the DMM motor using the STM32 board. The specific board that I used will be in the description. Um, so just to roughly go through the code, uh, I'm just gonna show you the kind of basics uh, if you cross-reference this video with the Arduino setup that we did uh, a few years ago, uh, you'll notice that all of it is pretty similar, and uh, that's just because, you know, Ar Arduino is written very similarly to C. Some things, of course, need to be translated, some extra functions need to be written. So I'll just briefly touch on those uh, going through the code. Now to start, uh, obviously we have all our declarations, uh, just, you know, as a standard thing for, for C. Um, 
This first function is a quick little callback for the timer that was used to create a delay function. So instead of just getting the microcontroller to sleep, we used a timer so that interrupts from other channels can still go off. This is just to make it easier in case you want to use this in other applications. So that way you're not just completely stopping your microcontroller uh, when you need a delay. <clears throat> Uh, just to start, of course, we have the in, uh, initializations of all of the necessary uh, components of the microcontroller. Um, and we have this menu string. Now, the interesting thing to see with these menu strings is you'll notice there's this funny little code here, this slash x1b uh, left square bracket 1m, and then there's a carriage return. That's not included in there. But this this little section is I believe a uh, Terra term specific uh, kind of formatting that allows you to bold and change the, the colors of text. This is not necessary, um, but I just wanted to put it out there that this is, I, I believe it's a specific uh, Terra term function. So if you use this program with a different terminal application, you might get all of this uh, kind of, for, for lack of a better word, uh, garbage thrown out into your terminal and just in case you're wondering why that might happen um, this is the Terra term function there's always a starting code and an ending code as you see here with the slash x1b um, that's just to show what gets bolded in the middle bolded and color changed so just to clear up any confusion there that is what that is and as we scroll down we can see that this is essentially just the menu choices. Uh, so you're just waiting for an input over UART, uh, and then you are comparing that input with a switch statement to kind of determine what you want to do. Um, this, of course, can be expanded on. It serves as a great framework if uh, you care about making a local menu on a, a microcontroller just for very simple applications. Um, we have the enable functions here. The, I believe two is speed control. Uh, three is the position. Uh, and as you can see, they call these separate menus to go on different, uh, kind of different methods of control. The time delay is a function that I will briefly touch on in just a moment here. Um, but the speed menus and position menus essentially look exactly like what you're seeing here. Uh, the program itself is a lot of formatting and you know, some some kind of control and programming here and there, but all in all, it's it's uh, it's a lot to look at, but it's it's really not uh, too complicated once you see that most things are just strings being sent to a terminal. Uh, case four was the homing function, um, the go home function. I will briefly touch on that as that's not included in the uh, Arduino uh, tutorial that we uh, that we posted a couple years back. Um, yeah, all of this, all of this is homing, and then this is the drive reset. Um, that is fairly straightforward. I don't think we need to cover too much on that. Um, so the speed menu, as as I said before, looks a lot like the main menu, with the different selections. Um, there are some limiting factors involved here. So when a speed that is too high gets set um, I believe it blocks inputs um, yes so so if a speed gets set too high uh, above 3000 rpm I believe our motors are good to 5000 rpm maximum but I used 3000 just as that's the rated speed um, didn't want to push the motor too hard just for the purpose of demo um, it will return an error and not allow you to kind of set the speed higher. So that's a little tiny safety feature that's just software-based, uh, very easy. Um, but yeah, so speed speed control is relatively simple. Uh, when you go ahead and start the movement, you'll notice we go to a different function. So on a carriage return, uh, we or sorry, case three. So when, when you when you go ahead and press 
three on the menu, you get taken to this <clears throat> update motor data function. Um, so that function, uh, I'm just gonna scroll past position. It's the same thing with the uh, call to the update motor data. This is the important function here. So it's always reading position and speed with small delays in between just to make sure that those uh, UART transmissions are clean. Um, so it always reads and updates. Again, we have more TerraTerm formatting. So just look past that or delete that if you're using another terminal application. I would strongly recommend TerraTerm uh, for this use case, but you can use whatever you'd like. Um, the inputs are shown here, but before we start the inputs, we are actually enabling in, uh, interrupts, and that's just to allow the keys to be pressed at any time. So there's an instant response uh, when you press a key so that you can stop the motor when it needs to be stopped uh, or change the direction. Or for the case of the position functions, you can perform your move. Um, I'm not going to get too into depth here. Um, it's uh, essentially just updating the terminal and performing slight direction changes, or sorry, not slight direction changes, but uh, quick direction changes and exiting menus. <clears throat> um, the function that I did want to touch on was the timer and the go home function. So the go home function is here. It's just a, a very quick and dirty function to read the position of the motor and kind of take it through these tiered step down uh, of like step down of speed to get it uh, very close to the home position. And then it goes ahead and stops and does the last move to ensure that you're getting to zero every single time. Um, this, this can be modified to give more steps, to give less steps, however you please. But that's essentially all it's doing. It's just checking the position and then taking it through a series of steps to get back to home. And all of these return ones are just to indicate that the homing is complete. Um, so I believe the function at the top uh, keeps calling until the position reads zero. So it'll keep going through this kind of uh, function to ensure that you get to zero when you need to get there. Um, by default, uh, it returns five. Five is an arbitrary number. It doesn't have any total meaning it's just to kind of ensure that hey you didn't you know enable the motor the the drive isn't enabled the power is not on so it's not safe to move or it's not ready to move it's it's just a, a very uh simple kind of method to do that um the last function i wanted to touch on is this time delay function this is just a uh, timer setup so you're setting up your timer in count up mode uh, in capture and compare uh, and with that you are you are setting the uh, I believe the register is being set to mimic the actual delay of the Arduino so the functionality is the exact same as what you would get for a delay function on the Arduino. So if you put delay 1000 in an Arduino, it's a one second delay. This works the same. The specific setup details are obviously down in the, the functions generated by the STM cube IDE. Um, but yeah, that is essentially just a quick and dirty overview of what this code does. Um, it is available for download just down in the description. 